I mean, initially when I see this, I lean under with a Troy game, um, but I'll wait on it a little bit. And I lean Troy a little bit just because the better defense in the end. You know, the X factors to me on the UTSA side is Harris. The guy's just phenomenal, great quarterback, put a team on his back and lead a drive. So I think this game's close. Um, so I'd want the points if I had to be on, be on a side here. All right, next up, we've got the Fenway Bowl. We move to Saturday, December 17th for these games. The Fenway Bowl, Fenway Park, Boston Mass, Louisville, Cincinnati. Louisville, two and a half point favorites, 45 the total. What a crazy situation here unfolding. We know Cincinnati has already lost Luke Fickle, uh, their head coach. Uh, of course, uh, he no longer at uh, Cincinnati. Moving on, taking on the uh, Wisconsin uh, head co coaching job there. Moving on to be with the Badgers. And it, isn't it amazing that we're now hearing reports just earlier this morning that Louisville's current head coach, Scott Satterfield, is likely the candidate to take over as the Cincinnati Bearcats head coach. And these two teams just happen to be playing each other uh, here in the Fenway Bowl uh, on Saturday, December 17th. So talk about a weird situation here. He basically uh, is going to get a chance to oversee his new team, the Cincinnati Bearcats, because it looks like it's fait accompli. Uh, that Scott Satterfield is going to be the head coach of Cincinnati and try to take out his old team, uh, the Louisville Cardinals. So, And these are situations that are always dicey with betting bowl games, the early ones especially, the coaching changes, guys that are moving on to other uh, places. Because a lot of times it's not only the head coach that's on the move. He's taken his coordinators with him. He's taken his coaching staff with him. He's taken some of the players even with him. And it leaves it all up in the air in terms of, Who's going to coach the game? Who's going to call plays for the game offensively, defensively? And who's going to play in the game when you see these moving, you know, musical chair situations in terms of coaching uh, uprooting? So that's something to factor in here with Cincinnati, obviously with Fickle gone, and obviously with Louisville. Now it looks like Satterfield's on his way to Cincinnati. So it makes this very, very tricky early on. You want to wait and see if you get a real clear sense who's coaching, who's calling plays, who's playing from a court starting perspective, starting offense, starting defense. So this, I'm not going to give you too much on this game because there's just so much up in the air. I think if all things were equal, let's say there was no coaching changes, everybody that's available to play for these two teams would play. I'd probably still lean towards Cincinnati because I, I think that team I trust a little bit more, especially uh, in terms of defense. Uh, Louisville's defense comes and goes. Uh, the Louisville team, when I look at it, when it's Cincinnati uh, defensively, uh, can I think stymie a little bit what Louisville wants to do offensively uh, in this game? I would lean Cincinnati if everybody was there and present, but that's obviously not going to be the case anymore. Uh, Connor, Fenway Bowl, what do you think? Yeah, Fenway Bowl here. See, this this line's already moved. I see two and a halfs now everywhere. Uh, maybe it keeps moving. If I can get over three, I'm going to look You know, Cincinnati's way here. I'm right with you. I've had trouble, you know, you know my struggles with Louisville. It's just been what team comes to play here and how motivated will they be? I have no idea, especially you talk about with the coaching changes on both sides. This one's a, a, a wait and see for me for sure. But I'd look Cincinnati. I already like the two and a half. Uh, hopefully maybe you can get three. Um, I'd look that way. I think this game is close either way.